Free chlorine are um, one milligram per liter to a maximum of five milligrams per liter. Uh, generally, most pools won't really need to go above three uh, as long as filtration and then not being uh, is um, working well and being backwashed regularly, and as long as it's not being overloaded. Um, the combined chlorine uh, you would always want to be less than one. Uh, once it starts getting higher than that, it's obviously slight concern that the pool is being overloaded. Uh, the pH. Levels uh, you want between 7.2 to 7.4, uh, and the total dissolved solids or TDS uh, you don't want to be more than a thousand greater than the incoming supply. So, depending on whereabouts you are in the country, that will vary quite significantly, uh, with generally being higher in the southeast and lower in the north of England. Uh, for spars, um, the free chlorine, because of the uh, increased risk, uh, the minimum is free, uh, the maximum is still five. Uh, the combined chlorine is still the same levels, which is less than one. Uh, the pH is uh, a slightly wider but starting lower range of 7 to 7.6, and that's because of the uh, slight increased risk uh, in sparkles. Uh, and the TDS is exactly the same as the pools, uh, no more than a thousand greater than the incoming supply. Um, for uh, paddling pools and in water features, uh, these would generally run the same as a swimming pool. Um, although usually, because of the increase in risk, um, you normally would run a minimum of four people in the uh, So the chemistry of the four water supplies, um, there's main constituents that we, we look for. Um, first one of these is alkalinity. Now, um, alkalinity is a measure of the um, Um, the higher the alkalinity, the more resistant the pH change uh, the water will be. And the range we look for is in 80 grams per liter. Um, if it's below the 80, um, you will often find you get pH bounce or you get rapid changes in pH. Um, if it's greater than 200, um, you can start to get pH lock or at least get um, pH change quite um, difficult to achieve. Um, as it as possible. Um, if you do have a low alkalinity, um, it can be raised by adding, say, bicarbonate. Um, the hardness um, is all of the um, calcium, aluminium, and magnesium salts. Um, it's particularly relevant um, because low um, hardness will tend to make the water uh, corrosive. Uh, whereas it's very high, it's likely to be more terrible for me. Um, sulfate level, um, ideally you want it as um, lower than uh, 316 milligrams per litre. Um, it can be um, quite high from depending on the constituents of the incoming water, the main supply, or particularly the borehole supply, um, and also as part of um, depending on what chemicals you use in the pool. This is like um, high sulfate levels greater than 360 uh, can affect cement and grout uh, unless it's um, resistant to this um, and is generally lowered by oxygen. Uh, the chloride, which you would ideally like to put in 20 milligrams per litre, um, can cause, uh, so this is uh, again also part of the breakdown compound. Um, the high levels of chloride will attack. Uh, metal within the pool system and also surrounds. Um, particularly usually on um, the uh, things um, within the pool area and often get um, micro pitting happening. Um, metals within the pool, uh, usually things like um, 
Ideally, you want this to be less than uh, two milligrams per liter. Uh, once you start getting over that, it's generally the fall is being overloaded or the inside. Um, and it also um, has the nitrogen content, which is inorganic nitrogen, which is ammoniacal nitrogen, and um, organic uh, constituent, which is albuminoid nitrogen. Uh, and again, these constituents can really to show you um, the levels of um, overloading of the pulp. Um, you can get higher nitrogen content if you're using sunuric acid, um, the natural part. Uh, the total dissolved solids um, is all of the solids within the pulp system uh, that dissolved, um, so if you have a pulp base, um, chloride, things like that. Um, Generally, you're only going to get rid of these uh, by backwashing uh, and also re regularly backwashing. Um, most times, they normally say that it should be effective. Uh, but what you mean is just because you backwashed the times that you're supposed to, doesn't mean that that will always stay the same. Mm -hmm. You think the amount of people using the pool or the actual nature of what people do in the pool is what starts to affect the loading on the pool. You'll have to be monitored as you go along. Longer or more frequently. Sanganier uh, index um, is uh, or balance is able to um, help you determine whether your pool water is um, scale forming or corrosive. Um, and as you can see, um, you use temperature, hardness, alkalinity, and the pH uh, level uh, to put into the um, the formula at the bottom, uh, and that will then give you a number which will generally be either slightly positive or negative. Uh, if these become largely positive or large numbers, then you'll likely to start seeing either precipitation out of, of scale or you'll start to see more corrosion. Um, these should be done over a period of time so you can start to see if there's any trends, um, and obviously, usually based on a particular problem being, being raised in the first place to see if the pool water is causing it. But Corrosion within the pulses. Um, um, well, there's two ways of doing it for um, the check testing. Uh, there's a comparator which uh, uses um, a color wheel, and the result would use using PPD compared against it. Um, they're fairly simple and easy to use. Um, they do need the wheel to be clean and to be clean. Um, also, they need to be good, and quiet. Or you could get a massive variance of the figure that you put in, have it in a darkened room compared to um, natural light or compared to white light. So it is very much um, human error involved in the in, in, yeah. uh, So quickly, um, use a light within um, the machine that you use and kind of sense it to that level. Um, these need also extremely clean cells. Um, as any scratches, uh, residue, or also with on the cells will actually cause um, either scratching or the absorption of the light. And then you can actually get um, a massive difference because your standard cell that you use will set up uh, based on the case of whereas the ones that you're using with um, the DPD or the gate will have residue in and you're looking for value in the pool. Um, any reading for free chlorine that you've done any of these tests that are over three milligrams per litre 
um, you will need to carry out a dilution um, as you will get partial bleaching out occurring. Um, so what you'll need is a, um, a, a dilution pot, which can be uh, purchased from most um, pool supply companies. Um, all can be tested um, a minimum under three times a day, um, where the bar will be two hours, although this should always be based on the risk assessment. So any greater risk or higher usage of that rate will be used as the basis on which you then increase upon, uh, not do it as a matter of course. Uh, within the pool system itself, um, you will normally have um, a panel which will do automatic readings of the system and automatically dose where required. Uh, these use um, a, a couple of different uh, techniques. So you have amperometric probes, which are generally um, the hypercores or iron content in the water. Um, they're generally sort of more accurate. Um, these can be um, calibrated through using DPD1 cutters as long as it's well calibrated. Read up the oxidative power of pool water um, and it's really more cruelty of the pool before it. Uh, they're a little bit more cruelty the average, although they usually do a lot. An electrode. Um, they're usually in line with the other probe for the chlorine, um, and these are usually calibrated weekly using uh, buffer position. Uh, buffer position will compare the uh, panel results, what they get from the pool, and then actually start to see if there's any trends or drifting that's occurring. So you can actually start to get a better understanding of how your pool system works. So what do we um, use as our chlorine donors to disinfect the pool? Um, one of the main types is sodium um, hypochlorite, uh, particularly in um, areas where you have um, a higher hardness of water. Um, they usually come in liquid form and drums of between uh, 15 to 15 percent uh, weight to weight. Um, although sometimes you can have a large percent of um, you can also be uh, producing um, so carbon chloride electrolytically uh, by passing the current through um, sodium chloride solution or by maintaining a 2,000 to 4,000 milligrams per litre um, sodium chloride in pool water to pass it through um, in the um, You have to be very careful with this method as it does produce hydrogen gas. Um, also, will rain through uh, the air. And you would also still need a standby supply of sodium hydrochloride for any maintenance or disappointment. Um, hazards uh, associated with this are what we call the vapors uh, and can leak. Um, and also, it can be with acid or chlorine gas. Um, calcium hydrochloride. Uh, usually comes in tablet or granule form in various sacks or tub sizes. Um, this will need to be dissolved before um, being closed. Um, some pieces of granule sometimes are almost as well to uh, in a hopper and avoid it. Uh, usually, this tends to be dissolved down to um, three to a three percent solution, although some things may require it. Um, there are quick dissolving products available. Uh, which Slightly higher. Um, this will raise calcium hardness within the pool. Uh, it is generally not used in the southeast of England, um, purely because of the higher increased uh, calcium within the natural water supply of the pool. Uh, but it's generally more beneficial in the north of England where you have a lower amount. Um, the hazards of this are that reacts on it with all kinds of materials, uh, particularly um, chlorinated plants or something else. And formed from the candy and heated to the come in uh, two forms um, either sodium uh, trichloroisocyanurate, trichloroisocyanurate, or trichloroisocyanurate acid, 
much work. Uh, when dissolved in water, uh, they form uh, hydrochloric acid and cyanuric acid. And generally, these tend to be used in outdoor pools or pools with um, very high light coming through onto them as light will take on the chlorine uh, and the cyanuric acid will stabilize this. Um, uh, so you um, minimize the breakdown. The only problem you do have the cyanuric acid is it also binds up to some free chlorine. Uh, so you need to have a minimum reserve level, uh, which is, as you can see from the table, based on the level of cyanuric acid, you have then have a uh, corresponding minimum free chlorine level. You need. Uh, this is usually put in force by erosion feeders or um, larger or more used as opposed to um, some personal backdoors or if you have a um, um, they should be tested for uh, usually a weekly level until a certain level um, is achieved, and then once that's done, um, the, the level is maintained. Um, the first law is generally pH neutral, uh, although the first law is generally used to lower the pH slightly, so we need to say to a um, pH. Um, here you can see why pH is important for uh, pools because although you have a chlorine reserve in the pool, the effectiveness of that is dependent on the pH. So the lower pH that you have, the more effective the disinfectant is. Um, the ranges that are given were given earlier uh, are also because although a lower pH level is much more uh, beneficial to the pool in many ways, as long as the pool is made of um, resistant materials that can deal with that. Unfortunately, uh, humans don't like very low pHs or very high pHs, so that's why we have a nice range that humans can also enjoy, as well as having a nice patch in the tidal uh, pool. And how do we uh, change the pH and make a difference? So, uh, several different products. Um, we've got uh, hydrochloric acid, uh, which comes in uh, liquid form, usually around about 25% um, uh, weight for weight. Uh, sodium bisulfate, or dry acid, uh, which is uh, granulated, uh, comes in various sized drums and stuff. Um, this basically forms sulfuric acid when dissolved in water, um, and it starts to turn the acidity. Uh, this will increase the sulfate level within the pool, which, if uh, insufficient washing is carried out, can lead to sprouts. Carbon dioxide. Uh, this is effective where alkalinity is less than 100 milligrams per uh, liter. Uh, it's uh, heavier than air, so you have, you have a potential uh, in the acid. Sulfuric uh, acid uh, comes in various sizes, um, is uh, a very reactive acid. Um, the percentages, uh, although usually around about 50%. Uh, this also will increase the sulfate levels that we have before and the that can lead to. Uh, calcium carbonate or soda ash uh, is granulated and can also be in various sizes and on me. And also uh, sodium hydroxide due to some of the high um, liquid trioxide. Um, the nature of the supply of water will be the governing factors to which um, chlorine donor you use and also which pH correct you use. Uh, if you use the wrong ones, you can lead to uh, problems within the pool, such as um, increased hardness, which can then increase uh, scale forming, or things that the increase of the topic. Erosion. Relative cement supply. So, the disinfectant itself is the purpose of this is to keep the pool as sterile as possible. Um, really, you want to be in zero um, colony form units as possible. Um, and there are levels um, associated in terms of when you would need to do uh, corrective action to those. And for um, closer. Um, 
the um, chlorine that is, or residual in the uh, water, uh, and although it will eradicate bacteria as long as we need it will also help oxidize any waste matter, um, either from bacteria itself or from uh, chemicals. All of this waste matter will help for use. Um, so the chlorine uh, donors that you can see here are the um, sodium hypochlorite and calcium hypochlorite. And when these are dissolved into the water, they form hypochlorous acid, which will act as the disinfectant. And you can see that there in the head at the bottom. Um, hypochlorous acid is a uh, weak acid and uh, can react further, uh, forming um, hydrogen and hydrogen. Uh, this reaction is the pH level. Um, the lower the pH, the more the reaction will flavor the left hand side, forming more hypochlorous acid. Um, the hypochlorous acid is a much stronger disinfectant than hypochlorite iron by about 100 times. Although that's um, a fact of very depending on uh, which literature you read. Um, this is why pH yeah, is uh, very important to the um, disinfectant of the pool, uh, why you can actually maximize the amount of disinfectant power by not actually having to add any extra chlorine to the pool. Um, the chlorine will react uh, with the pollutants in the pool. Uh, one of the main uh, pollutants is uh, ammonia. Um, and you can see here the hypochlorite reacting with the ammonia to form monochloramine. Uh, it's a standard reaction within the pool water. Um, the monochloramine itself is slightly uh, disinfected. Um, and uh, it's a standard uh, reaction that will happen in all pools. Um, but given enough hypochlorite within the system, it will react further. And then you can see that the hypochlorite reacts with the monochloramine to form dichloramine. Um, the dichloramine is less soluble uh, and is volatile uh, and can irritate the eyes and nose. Um, this, although it is unstable and when reacting with the monochloramine can actually uh, break down to form hydrochloric acid and uh, nitrogen. Um, this is what they call breakpoint chlorination, where the byproducts start to break themselves down and reduce the combined chlorine level. Um, as long as the free chlorine has no chloramine to react with, this will form a residual. Um, these reactions are quite slow and can take up to an hour. Um, so for this to happen, it's key that the free chlorine needs to be uh, at least double combined chlorine level with the combined chlorine less than one milligram per liter. Um, if the combined chlorine level is um, higher than this, or if the pool is overloaded, um, a further reaction can happen in which the, the um, hypochlorite ion, uh, so the um, hypochlorite ion, um, with the trichloramine um, and form uh, trichloramine. Uh, this is the most volatile of the chloramines uh, and is largely responsible for the chlorine smell in pool halls, uh, which is not that there's chlorine in the water, it's that there's actually too much dirt in the water and that's uh, coming out of solution and that's what you can smell. Uh, this can be um, an asthma. Um, Triggerer, so often you will get people with asthma complaining about uh, their breathing within sort of these pool areas. Uh, Trihalomethanes um, are also uh, a major um, product. Uh, these are based on substitution of the free uh, form uh, uh, hydrogen ions in the methane. Um, and the main um, THM formed is chloroform, um, which is carcinogenic, which is why. This is uh, a particular problem because obviously you don't want known carcinogens, or you want the level to be as low as possible. Uh, well, that's the talk concluded. If anyone has any questions, um, I'd like to let me know. That'd be great.
So well, thanks for everyone listening, and uh, thanks a lot.